Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard United Airlines Flight 1478 from Denver to Jackson Hole. I am your captain, Blue Chip HD. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, as we are currently pushing back from stand B20 at Denver International Airport, and we're headed to Jackson Hole, like I said before. Um, we've got a short flight today. Total flight time is about an hour and a half. Um, and we've actually got a good length taxi today. Probably about 10 to 15 minutes on the taxi because Denver is such a uh, spread out airport that we've got a long ways to run just to get to the um, runway. So as we're pushing back here, we are... Uh, Cutting or er, turning on the uh, fuel for engine number two as that spools up, and we are checking over our left shoulder just to make sure that the GSX guy is staying out of the way as he's supposed to. As engine number two starter cuts out, we uh, flip on engine number one as well as the um, position lights. And we just watch the uh, N2 of engine number one motor up until we can put in uh, the fuel for engine number one. For today's flight, uh, went ahead and set up before uh, before turning on the recording. Um, decided that it was uh, probably a better use of my time just to uh, record the actual moving portions of the flight and the in-flight setup instead of all the uh, pre-flight setup. Setting the um, altimeter to three zero point three zero zero, I believe. Uh, I can't see from... Uh, I'm actually doing a voiceover uh, on this video instead of a normal um, during flight commentary, um, just getting the um, overhead panel ready for taxi, turning on some taxi lights, the engine starter switches to continuous, uh, all the fuel pumps, the engine generators, and the packs, and turning off that APU. Doing a quick check of the center pedestal and deciding it is time to move on. So. As we taxi today, we're, uh, Denver has these uh, special taxi lines that line up to the stands so that there's actually uh, almost four lanes of taxiing between the terminal buildings. So we're going to take this, what is called the green taxi line, all the way down until it puts us onto the uh, main taxiway. The main taxiway that we're taxiing to is Taxi Line Bravo Sierra. We're going to, once we're on Bravo Sierra, we're going to go until we hit Lima, take a left on Lima, taxi all the way north to Echo Echo, turn right on Echo Echo, then take, immediately take another left onto Mike, and that'll be it. Um, that'll put us at the threshold of runway 08, which is where we are taking off today. So like I said, we're taking off from runway 08 at KDEN, Denver International Airport, with a uh, cruising altitude today of flight level 380. We are performing a derated one takeoff with a 33 degrees Celsius assumed temperature on the climb. Departing via the Yami 3 departure with a LAR transition. The route is quite simple to um, Jackson Hole. 
Once we are through the transition, we go direct to DNW, and then beyond that, we take um, runway vectors in from DNW. And once we actually get to the arrival, we have a very interesting arrival and landing into Jackson Hole. Sit tight and just wait for that. We'll get there. So one interesting thing about this route is we're doing a lot of high elevation um, takeoffs, landings, and flyings today. So Denver Airport sits at about 5,500 feet above sea level. And then the airport that we're going to is actually one of the highest in the country at about 6,500 feet in elevation above sea level. So as we exit the green taxi line here onto Bravo Sierra, we take this left and up ahead we should see Lima very soon. So although this video is part of the Monday Real Ops series, you'll notice that it is actually coming out on a Tuesday. So yesterday, Monday, was Labor Day in the United States, and um, I was extremely busy with family stuff and other streaming stuff, um, but I wasn't able to uh, actually get this video finished in time to release on Monday, but Tuesday is just as good, so tomorrow I will actually release the episode 2 of our Let's Play Farming Simulator 17 video, uh, so that should be ready then as well. So right up here, our first taxiway is Taxiway Lima. We're going to take a quick left and get on our way towards runway 08. We've got quite the uh, ways to run because of how, like I said, spread out the Denver airport is. So sit back tight and we can taxi all the way down. So a bit of information about our flight today. We are um, we're expecting a flight time of about an hour and four minutes and total block time of about an hour and 20 minutes. Our zero fuel weight today is 126.6 thousand pounds with about 118 passengers. Release fuel is 10,027 pounds with an estimated remaining of about 3.5 thousand pounds once we get to Jackson Hole. As I said earlier, our cruising altitude is flight level 380, which for such a short flight, you wouldn't normally see a cruising altitude that high. But when you start at an elevation of 5,500 feet and land an elevation of 6,500 feet, you are able to get all the way up to a normal cruising altitude for only an hour long flight. As we taxi down the taxiway, you'll see all the uh, United stuff are sitting around. There's the uh, static United plane that we passed, and then the United hangar here on the left. Denver is one of United's big hubs um, for the longest time. They actually had a domestic 747 route between, I believe it is LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, and Denver, the airport that we're at right now. That route, I believe, is no longer in service, but it was one of the few domestic, regularly scheduled domestic 747 routes in the country.
as I mentioned earlier, um, I would like to shamelessly plug my Twitch stream um, as we are taxiing down Lima. Um, the address is twitch.tv at blue slash not at slash blue chip HD. I stream Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. The past couple streams have all been flight simulation, but I do include other simulation games in the mix as well. So it looks like right here we're going to be taking a right onto Echo Echo, and then immediately take another left onto the Mike Taxiway, right up to the hold short line for runway 08. I am trying to focus mostly on YouTube creation and creating these flight videos for you guys, uh, but Twitch streaming is something that I love to do on the side because I do love to be able to interact with the community live. It's great interacting with you guys when you're able to comment and watch the video, but I also really enjoy being able to interact with viewers live, therefore Twitch is the perfect platform for this. I'm going to go ahead and stop at the hold short line, set the parking brake, and do some last minute checks. Check that the flaps are set, and check the overhead panel, make sure everything's good. Turn on the landing lights, turn off the taxi lights, and turn on the strobe. Start the captain's side clock, release the parking brake, brake the cabin and it is time to depart on our way to KJAC KJAC Jackson Hole all the way over to Wyoming As we turn right here onto the runway to line up, we are going to take a straight out departure approach, no hesitation. So once we line up, we are going to get the throttles to about 50%, wait till they are stable, and then hit the toga thrust. Throttles are pushed forward and now Toga is activated. So we are relying on the auto throttle from here on out. If I remember correctly, I did feel like I was being pushed a little bit to the left while coming down the runway. I remember having a lot of right rudder trying to stay near the runway center line. As we come up on V1, V1. and then rotate, V1. rotate. then V2. V2. I'm going to go positive right and gear up. And then we're going to put the autopilot in very quickly because we always love to enjoy the views. When it comes to flight simulation, the only thing that I like to manually fly is the takeoff and a few miles before landing, because otherwise I like to look out the window, and I just have a hard time looking out the window and fo focusing on flying, as anyone would. We're going to go ahead and remove the flaps altogether from flaps one. And looking at the altitude, since we took off 
at such a high altitude, it's not going to be long until we get to 10,000. And we'll be able to break through that 250 knot at below 2,000 restriction and then um, take care of our 10,000 feet checks. One thing that I do want to promote before we uh, go through our 10,000 foot checks is starting this Wednesday, I will be beginning a new series. Um, I will actually be beginning World Tour Wednesday. I created a map of a world tour and I'm going to make sure and put that in the description of this video below. So go check that out if you want to look at the routes on the world tour. But our first route this Wednesday is going to be KDFW to KMCO, that is Dallas-Fort Worth International to Orlando International. That's our first route, and every Wednesday we'll have a new route until we uh, complete the world tour, which may actually take over a year if I have enough spots. As we pass through 10,000 feet, we can take out the landing lights, take out the engine starter switches and ding the cabin for 10,000 feet. We are having some wonderful views here out on departure, all the beautiful farmland uh, north of Denver. So this is where I'm going to leave you, uh, enjoy the rest of the flight and I'll see you guys when it's time to plan descent.
Welcome back everyone. We are just getting near our top of descent, so we're going to go ahead and plan out our descent path. So we're going to take flaps 40 with a uh, VREF speed of 135, which means our approach speed is going to be closer to 139 knots. So as we're looking here, we are going through the charts for all these um, approaches. Um, there are no stars coming into KJAC. Um, if I remember correctly, the winds were favoring 0-1, um, but the way that our route was already configured was not very convenient to runway 0-1, so we are looking through the charts and trying to figure out which runway is best, and I believe we pick, end up picking runway 1-9. Now, you'll see at the end of this video that it was probably a bad choice because the winds changed a little bit, and we actually ended up landing with a tailwind, which messed us up a lot, but you'll get there when you see the end of the video. If you'll look over on the right FMC, you'll see the waypoint D in W. That is the waypoint that is causing us to pick runway 19 because DNW is north of the airport and enab enables us to swing straight into runway 19 where if we had gone for runway 01 we would have had to come back on a downwind leg, take a base leg, and then approach into 01. The decision also to be made is whether to use the ILS Y or the ILS Z. Each of these has a different approach pattern and different um, waypoints and transitions. So the ILS Y ha includes the DNW transition. So that's the one that we uh, picked. Now we're going to go ahead and step through the plan to make sure that there are no issues with it. I believe that there is a discontinuity because the plan, the flight plan that we originally loaded in uses um, JAC or Jack as a waypoint. But we're going to go ahead and clear that and just put DNW at the top and let the flight plan do the rest. And after going stepping through everything, everything seems to work perfectly normal. And we're going to um, leave you there, and when we get close to arrival, we'll see you then. Welcome back for a final time. We are in the final moments of our descent into Jackson Hole. The scenery and the views throughout this flight have been nothing short of amazing. There's a lot of add-ons that go into making such a great view and you'll find every single one of those add-ons down in the description below. Every single add-on that is used in this video specifically will be in the description below. Right now we are taking the localizer frequency from the uh, FMC and off the charts and putting it in. If I remember correctly it is 109.1. When we first loaded in, or returned to the flight deck, 
you saw me scrolling the uh, minimums up. I had a long ways to go. The, uh, the minimums are 7,070 feet. And if you've flown this aircraft before, you'll know that when you start scrolling through the minimums, it starts you at about 400 feet, and there's no quick scroll mechanism, so you do have to sit there and scroll for a couple minutes if you are landing at a high altitude airport. So right now we're just checking our altitude restrictions. We're gonna have to be 11,000 feet or below in a little bit, um, which should not be a problem. But we are going to need to deploy some drag once we start to line up with the localizer. The haze that is created around us is just creates such a ominous and mysterious effect. So, but before we uh, descend into the haze, we're doing one quick check, one quick scan of the overhead instruments. Uh, we have make sure our landing lights are on, we put the engine starters continuous, also the runway turnoff lights, and we have the logo and wing lights on as well because it is starting to get a little bit dark. The sun is beginning to set, which is part of what is creating such uh, beautiful views outside. Now we're going to go ahead and deploy some drag just to uh, bring the speed back a little bit. We hit one of the uh, deceleration circles on the magenta line, so we're going to make sure that we get to the speed we need to by the time we uh, get to this next waypoint. The airport's going to be off to our left there. Uh, so going to look at this amazing view of the lake and the mountains as we uh, turn left onto the localizer. We have now captured the localizer, so in a second we're going to arm the glide slope, and then eventually catch the glide slope very soon after. Just as we deploy flaps one, we have caught the glide slope and begun our final descent into KJAC, Jackson Hole. Going to dial our speed back all the way to our V approach speed of 139. And deploy all the way to flaps five. To assist with the deceleration of the aircraft. as well as flaps 5. We also are going to de deploy full detent speed brakes because at the glide path that we're currently at, we are having a little bit of trouble decelerating. The VNAV path does not show us to be above, above path, but the, um, the glide slope that we were at seemed to be a whole lot more than 3%. Now we're going to bring out more flaps all the way down to flaps 10 here. We should get a 2500 call. There we go. 2500 and we're going to bring the gear out. We are visual with the runway way off in the distance, but we're going to get a little bit closer and fully deploy the flaps before we take out the autopilot and the auto throttle. Deploy flaps 15. And now that the gear is out, we are having no problem slowing down because the gear does create so much drag. The gear is almost its own type of speed brake. Actually, it is its own type of speed brake. It spoils the airflow around the aircraft.
and we're going all the way down to flaps 30 now and then soon after we should be hitting flaps 40 and we'll be configured nice and early and we are now full flaps and ready to land gonna get a little bit closer before um, disengaging the uh, autopilot and we're also going to take one more quick view of these wonderful river and its tributaries and distributaries below so we can go ahead and take out the autopilot and the auto throttle and now it is my aircraft if you'll notice the first thing that happens is we do come a little bit off the glide slope we uh, start to get high on the glide um, which is going to come back to bite us once we get to the threshold of the runway in all honesty I'm going to go ahead and spoil it just a little bit this probably should have been a go around but I was intent on getting the airplane down and I was able to do so in a mostly safe manner we are just above 1000 feet should be approaching our minimums call soon and if you check out the pappies in the distance we do have four whites which does indicate how high above the glide we are and you can also look at the indicator on the um, primary flight display the vertically oriented pink diamond is way below the uh, center but we are trying to align with the runway and get the nose down as much as possible. So as we come over the runway threshold we're going to completely idle the throttle, get a sync rate warning which I didn't think was necessary but we did overfly the touchdown zone on a very short runway so we are going to apply full reverse thrust in an attempt to slow down For future reference, I probably would use Auto Brake 3 instead of Auto Brake 2. Here we are, and we are coming to the other end of the runway. And we're going to come here, and we are slowed down a good bit. We're going to do a quick turnaround and just barely miss the grass there on that turn. And we are down like I said, mostly safe. Now as we backtrack just a little bit to get over here on the tax taxiway, we are going to uh, flip on our taxi lights, the APU, and then once we get off runway we're going to turn off the landing lights, the engine starter switches, and the strobe. As we exit the runway, we take a left on Taxiway Alpha. We're going to take a Taxiway Alpha all the way down and park on Stand 2. Stand 2 is somewhat of a remote stand, but only because it does not have the terminal building right into it. The final actual gate is three, no, stand number one, and stand number two are actually just parking spots. But this uh, specific flight actually does park at stand number two, according to FlightAware. One thing that I have withheld so far is the fact that Although this is Monday Real Ops, uh, this route is normally flown in an Airbus A320. I do not own a P3D V4 compatible Airbus A320, but I decided instead to fly a 737-900, which 
I probably should have just flown the 800 because it might have had a better time slowing down and landing at such a short runway, but I knew that United flew the 900 variants, and I don't often get a chance to fly the 737-900. Usually I only fly the 900 when I'm flying Alaska Airlines or United. Taking a look around and just admiring the beautiful dynamic lighting spreading across the ground as we braked a little bit too much on the way to taxi or way down the taxiway to stand number two. do a quick scan of GSX and then find out that gate number two is actually not included in the gates menu. We're going to take a right on number two and line up and park by ourselves because we don't need a guide in. Do a pretty fantastic parking job here. And there's no one to blind with our taxi lights, so we can leave those on for just a second as we uh, line up. Go ahead and hit the parking brake. And turn off all the lights, make sure the APU is still on, and we can hit the engine cutoff switches. Go ahead and remove all the fuel pumps, the hydraulics, and the probe heat. Also, set the packs to the opposition, turn the engine starter cutoffs to off, turn on some more lights so we can actually see inside the cockpit, stop the first officer's clock. We were right on time with our flight today and disarm the emergency lights, turn off the yaw damper, switch off the IRS's, and then we are going to be done for the night with this plane, so we're going to make sure everything's set how it's supposed to be, and then flip off the battery. First, we're actually checking to see if there are any air stairs equipped on this uh, on this livery and there are not so we're just going to figure that out and then go flip off the battery and engines have cut out once we come out we get to listen to the glorious sound of the aircraft spooling down even though the sounds are a little bit late. So, I want to thank everybody so very much for watching this video. This is our second Monday Real Ops video, and honestly, I think it's much improved from last week in both route selection and uh, quality of video. So, once again, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I am Blue Chip HD. This is Blue Chip Sim, and I will see you guys next week for another episode of Monday Real Ops. Bye bye now.